This is brought to you by the strange, the bizarre, the unusual. I like it on both Facebook and YouTube. Succession between 1341 and 64, the Blouse faction, who still refused to relinquish their claim to rule over the Duchy of Britain, had taken Duke John, the sixth prisoner, in violation of the Treaty of Gironda in 1365. The 16 year old Gillies took the side of the house of Montford. Frias was able to secure the Duke's release and was rewarded with a generous land grant, which were converted into monetary gifts. In 1425, Frias was introduced to the court of Charles VII. And in 1434, and 1435, Rios gradually withdrew from the military and public life in order to pursue his interest, the construction of a splendid chapel of the Holy Innocents, where he officiated in robes of his own design, and the production of theatrical spectacle called Le Mestre de Stige de Bolinon. The play consisted of more than 2,000 lines of verse requiring 140 speaking parts and 500 extras. Jalice was almost bankrupt at the time of the production and began selling property as early as 1432 to support his extravagant lifestyle. By March 1433, he had sold all his estates in Poitou, except those of his wife, and all of his property in Amman. Only two castles has remained in his possession. In 1438, according to testimony, Del Rey spent, sent out Blanchett to seek individuals who knew alchemy and demon summoning. Blanchett contacted Pilate in Florence and convinced him to take service with his master. Having reviewed the magical books of Pilate and a traveling Breton, the race chose to initiate experiments, the first taking place in the lower hall of his castle. Attempting to summon a demon named Baron de Reis provided a contact with the demon for riches that Pilate was to give to the demon at a later time. 
As no demon manifested after three tries, the marshal grew frustrated with the lack of results. Pilate responded that the demon baron was angry and required the offering of parts of the child. The Reese provided these remnants in a glass vessel at a future evocation. All of this was to no avail, and the occult experiment left him bitter and with his wealth severely depleted. In his confession, Giles mentioned the first assaults of children occurring between spring 1442 and spring 1443. The first murder occurred. However, no account of these murders survived. Shortly after, Jalay's news were at the record of his confession states he killed or ordered to be killed a great but uncertain number of children after he sodomized them. Forty naked bodies of children were discovered in 1437. The first documented case of child snatching and murder concerns a boy of 12 and first man unknown. An apprentice to the Fuhrer. Gilles de Seal and Roger de Bucadale asked the Fuhrer to lend them the boy to take a message to Mutico. And when the Judon did not return, the two noblemen told the inquiring Fuhrer that they were ignorant of the boy's whereabouts and suggested he had been carried off the feed to be made into a page. In Jalice de Rey's trial, the events were testified to by Hollerette and his wife. The boy's father, Jean Giudon, and five others from Mexico. The boy was pampered, undressed, and in better clothes than he had ever known. The evening began with a large mill and heavy drinking, which acted as a stimulant. The boy was then taken to an upper room to which only Jalais and his immediate circle were admitted. There he was confronted with the true nature of the situation. The shot thus produced on the boy was an initial source of pleasure for Jalais. The victims were killed by decapitation, cutting of their throats, dismemberment, or breaking of their necks with a stick. A short, thick, double-edged sword called the Recomard was kept at hand for the murders. Poitou further testified that Rays sometimes abused the victims, whether boys or girls, before wounding them, and at other times after the victim had been slashed in the throat or decapitated. In his own confession, Gillette testified that when the said children were dead, he kissed them, and those who had the most handsome limbs and heads he held up to admire them. Paltol testified that he and Henriette burned the bodies in the fireplace. The cloths of the victims were placed into the fire piece by piece and the smell was minimized. The ashes were then into the cesspool to mode for other hiding places. The last recorded murder was the son of Finette Del Valablanche and his wife, Mathieu. This is brought to you by the strange, the bizarre, the unusual. I like it. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, share, and make comments. We love feedback.